Chicago's Brunch the Daily Morning Show, where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about a voting PSA uniting Hollywood ahead of midterm elections, broadcast TV's rising LGBTQ presence, pop singer Mariah Carey and other celebrities shocking <laughs> sleep schedules, and the college program that has students feeling like stars. Plus, Peter Corporal of the New York City-based burger chain Black Tap joined the table. Ooh, but ooh. first... But first, did you guys read the headline this morning that they're going to remake Clueless? Yes. As if. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's... How do you guys feel about it? Um, I just booed because <laughs> classics don't need to be remade. And I feel like they're, they're going to butcher it. Yeah. It's a 90s movie. I feel like this is the second time I'm going to quote Devin Sawa on the show <laughs> this week. But it's a 90s movie. It should stay in the 90s and be untouched. It's so perfect. Mm -hmm. But it still holds up. The reason why they remake them isn't because they they miss the story. It's because they know that they have such a big market that like by remaking it, like Clueless Fan, like, I don't think it needs a remake. But once I see it in theaters, I'm going to want to see it. I Maybe. Feel like Are you funny. not? Um, probably not. I'll probably wait for it to come out on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Thank you. Yeah. Whoa. I'm impressed by that VHS joke. That the so thing good. about it is it was such a 90s film from the fashion and the lingo. And just the every, incest. Yes, the incest. Uh, Paul so Rudd was her stepbrother, just if you guys haven't seen it. So it's, it's like... Incest adjacent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but it was such a 90s film that, again, they'd have to update it. And I don't want to see them with, like, I love that they had big brick phones. It's not cool that they have a, a smartphone. Like, it, it loses its Sorry, impact. Sorry, I'm still on the incest. Um, I would, would you have a problem hooking up with your steps in line? Not if my parents were divorced and it was years later. Yeah, neither would I. Yeah, I yeah. do. I always, like, I always had that fantasy where, like, my parents would get divorced and then they... We would have to share a house with some like hot person, and we'd be like, "Oh, we're not really related. Let's get back on these bunk beds." <laughs> once, yeah. Once again, pornos are being written at the Bill brunch table. <laughs> it's um, our theme for this week. Yeah, it really is our yeah. theme. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm actually have never seen Clueless. I know it's a big <gasps> surprise, so but weird. I, it's the movie of your people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure Rich I. White kids. I'm sure I would love it. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I don't know why they keep. Ta I mean, it's clearly just for money. But I guess if they feel like there's enough material to adapt it to to a mo to a gen what the Gen X mm -hmm. generation or whatever. But you know, Clues is turning into a musical already. They're turning into a musical, so getting the Mean Girls treatment. And it yeah. is the yeah. Clues that we know is actually a remake of Jane right. Austen's book that she wrote called Emma. So that was adapted from there. So if they adapt it further and maybe they can move the story along, they certainly can't try to recreate the magic. They're going to have to take it like in a whole new direction. That's a new story. Kind of like what. Well, what we saw with Sabrina, the teenage witch, like they made it dark and it's like this whole new thing. Like they're able to do that, maybe it could be good. Yeah, if they do something like that, I'll enjoy it a little bit more. But Clueless is so perfect. Like you could watch it right now and just be like, that nothing is wrong with it. Yeah. It is so perfect. Brittany Murphy, rest in peace, Aww. is such an icon in it. Everything about it, the wardrobe, the casting, the lingo. I just don't think they can really do it in this time period. I mean, removing Stacey, Stacey Dash would be great. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot That's she's true. in that. I'm really just to push her to the side. So if they do the remake and just make sure her character's gone, just bring a new black girl. Oh, the Good. fact that we still have to say her, oh, Stacey Dash, she was running for office earlier. Oh, so that ended a after a week. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, they all grew up to be kind of odd. They all did. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprising. Yeah, but is there lingo? Like, do the, do the youth have lingo like they did back <laughs> in the youth. day? Yeah, I mean, you, I, I just, I'm so surprised you haven't seen it. I want no, to. No, I know back then they did something now. Like, is there a new lingo to, yeah. like, this new movie? Yeah, world? of course. Of course. Interns? Uh -huh. What is the lingo? <laughs> no, what are you doing? Like, uh, they're, like, so ready to Besides mess up. Besides, I'm texting, like, texting <laughs> you have lingo. Lit, dope, YOLO, like, all that shit oh, yeah. is, yeah. YOLO's right? old. That's all old. Yeah. yeah, but not this movie. They weren't, we weren't saying lit in the 90s. No, I'm saying the movie that they make in right. like next year would have to have like the most current whatever. Kids. Yeah, I I do that on fleek. I mean, yeah, that's... we saw it old right now, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> from Broadway to Hollywood, celebrities yeah. are urging voters to get out to the polls for the midterm elections. Hamilton's Lin Manuel Miranda and other A-list celebs made an appearance in a new PSA produced by the nonprofit Every Town for Gun Safety, encouraging fans to vote on November 6. Let's take a look. On November 6th, we have an opportunity to elect. Candidates will actually do something about our country's gun violence crisis. Gun sense candidates who will support common sense gun safety laws. Candidates who will offer more than thoughts and prayers. And most importantly, people that aren't bought and paid for by the NRA. But we have to show up to the polls to actually make that happen, so. So we've got to get out and vote for them. 
So what's your plan for voting? How are you going to get there? Do you know where it is? Can you walk to your voting location? Will you take public transportation? Maybe you'll drive there, maybe you'll bike there, or you'll carpool. Knock on your neighbor's doors, ask them if they need a ride. Come hell or high water, you gotta get there. What's your plan for voting? Wow, that was a really well-made video. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great, I'm glad we're talking about but it. Pa Padma's the I, only I, one I to agree. use the real cameraman. They like, definitely were like, we don't care what it looks like, just send us a video message. Some people really didn't. Put in. I'm yeah. glad we're reporting on a video that clearly was made by someone emailing 10 of their like B-list friends plus Lynn manuel it Was it's like, film this on an iPhone and then just cut it together on QuickTime. Charlize Theron, a B-list? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Julia Moore? <laughs> Julia Moore. No, but come on, there was like a bunch of people in there, you were like, who is that? Yeah, right. I, didn't, I didn't know who Yo, was. No, there's a bunch but... of, I mean, with, I, I actually think with celebrity videos that are like this, that are more pointed, I actually, I do think have somewhat more of an impact because they're giving direct directions. Like this is, like the whole idea is like plan your, your day, your, what, how you're gonna vote, how you're gonna get there, whatever. And it's, and it's specifically around gun safety. So I think yeah. it's kind of a clear message though it wasn't well produced. The um, 2016 videos, like, you know, there's the holy shit you gotta vote, the Ra mm -hmm. Rachel Bloom one. It's very funny, but I don't think it has much of an effect because like it's just for people that already like liked Hillary Clinton and like, oh, this is funny, like Trump sucks. Right. And it's well made and whatever. And uh, you know, I mean, then there was that fight song one. Remember all the celebrities sang fight songs for the DNC? I think I blocked well, that one. Yeah, out. exactly. Didn't get yeah. Hillary to win Wisconsin, that. so yeah. um, that didn't really work. But um, you know, I go back and forth. I think for the most part, like for, I think videos like this how that pointed messages can do, can make a difference. I mean, I think the organization that pulled together Every Town for Gun Safety is a really amazing organization. If you haven't looked it up, I hate that this has to be a partisan issue because it really isn't. Yeah. This organization works with advocates, local mayors, moms, survivors of gun violence, just to tighten restrictions and make sure that everybody is safe. So again, it shouldn't be a politicized issue. Yeah. I think it's just about protecting our community. So that's where I think it's a good message to be sending out there. Um, and, and in addition to that, Lucy McBath is running for Congress um, in Georgia, and she lost her son to gun violence. Yes. And so we have, again, people running for office who have these experiences. And I think it's just, to, again, important to remember that these are people, not necessarily politics. Right. It's like yeah. real people. Yeah, because they, they're, not, they're not advocating for Democratic candidates. No. They're advocating for candidates. Look at your candidates' gun views totally. on gun safety and gun laws. So it's yeah. very much from that point of view. Yeah. We just yeah. want everybody to be safe. But I love, I mean, you look back at the day, like the Rock, remember Rock the Vote? Like yeah, how big yeah. that was. Like I, I and mean, I, we we looked back at it. Like Madonna is 1990 when she's literally in a bikini with an American flag around her with two of her Vogue dancers, and they're doing. She basically rewrites Vogue or whatever. Like that is iconic. She got really criticized for that. Of though. course, she's in a, <laughs> she's in a bikini with the American flag wrapped around her. It's Madonna, but like that stuff. I mean, whether I don't that helped back in the day for those midterm elections. But hey, that'll get me to vote every year. I remember. <laughs> The, this isn't that, but I remember the SNL sketch when it was Maya Rudolph, and I don't know who else, but she was like solid as Barack. Oh, Fred oh I remember that. Yeah, Fred How good is that? <laughs> so, I sing that song still solid. every time I hear that song. Solid, I'm like, as, solid. Barack, <laughs> <laughs> as Barack. <laughs> uh, I do that. will give you to vote every time. That was so good. Yeah. And then of course, girl T Swift. I mean, and that that I think is like a direct celebrity intervention of like, this is what you have to do. Like, register to vote here. Do I wish she did it two years ago? Yes. Glad you did it now. But, so I think, I don't know, I think celebrities can play a role. I just think they need to be more pointed and not just like, look at me, we can sing and we hate yeah. Trump. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it helps when they show that they voted too. Jerry O'Connell and his wife, Rebecca Romaine, did early voting and mm. they like did a post together with their stickers. And I was mm -hmm. like, again, it's like a nice subtle way, not partisan, but it's just like, look, we voted, you can do it early. Like, you should do it. I like those like more subtle nods too, and they're not as direct and pointed. Do you yeah. guys have plans for voting day? You gonna make it make it a special day? Ooh yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. I'm gonna be in LA, so I'm voting in LA, and then um, I have a comedy show that night, so I'm gonna do something like to make people be like, if you come to the show and you voted and you oh. show me your sticker, like we'll give you. Oh free dope. Stuff. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Something like that. I like that. I don't have plans other than to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 going to be traveling to California, so I'm voting absentee. I'll be I won't be here in New York. Uh, the school that I vote at is literally across the street from my house, so I'm gonna like wake up, go vote, and then go back home yeah. and sleep for the rest of the day. It's always fun going to those schools. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at me in a school yeah. and I'm voting. It's kind of fun. I feel a little smart, like I'm learning something. 
I don't know. I want to feel that way. I always like going to the school when I vote. Um, oh, whatever. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. I like being in a school. I'm being in a school. I'm still not. I'm voting. It's fun. The vibes are always nice when I go to vote. Yeah. We're always like, oh, we did it. We're here. Especially, yeah. I live right around the corner from a psych psychiatric hospital. <laughs> so actually, everyone in there is always threatening to leave. They're always like, if no one shows me how to work this ballot, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in New York is just like. Like, no one cares. They're just like, then leave. And it's right. really horrible. Like, I wish people would help them. But I actually vote with, like, all the crazies in New York. Right. I'm like, who are you voting for? They're like, Iggy Pop today. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> it's truly Iggy Pop. insane. The voting poll on 24th Street it's at Brooke College is, like, a mess. And it's, like, just a cesspool of insane. That's amazing. I'm voting for my dad. I'm like, okay. You're like, I'm glad you showed up. Exercise yeah, that right. Yeah. Oh, so funny. God bless. A new study by the Avisky Group. <laughs> God bless them. God bless. You know, God bless Glad. Um, the Avisky Group Glad reveals that there, there are more LGBTQ characters on TV than ever before. The report, which takes a deep dive into the 2018-2019 TV season, found that LGBTQ series regulars on broadcast have reached nearly a 9%, with 50% of those characters being LGBTQ people of color. The study also found that LGBTQ TV characters were equally split along gender lines when compared to previous year. Woo! This is really cool. Hey! This is so exciting. <laughs> Progress. Progress. Yeah. Better not go any farther, am I right? <laughs> like, let's not stop here, but this is a good... 9%! Yeah. Holy moly! Good yeah. starting point. Uh, I think I read, yeah, so 8.8% 8, 8 of characters, and then that equals 113 regular or recurring characters right. on wow. television. And so then an additional 38 supporting characters. Yeah. This is on broadcast. So then there's 120 on cable and 75 on streaming. So okay. congrats. Yeah. I'm on cable. Thank Most you. of those people are po on posts, which thanks to Ryan Murphy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is big. I mean, I think representation matters, especially in television. Um, Joe Biden said, you know, Will and Grace did more for mm -hmm. gay people than almost anything ever, just showing that gay people are normal people. Um, so I think this is great. There was, and there were slightly more people of color yeah. than white people too, which I think is really important. And it actually surprised me. I was like happy to hear that. Yeah, it's really awesome. Um, I, I also really like that a lot of the shows I watch now it's not like a storyline, it's not like a story arc where they're like, I'm coming out. Like people are just bi or they're mm -hmm. just gay and it's just like, oh cool, we don't have to talk about it. It's just, they just are. Yes, finally it's so beautiful. starting to happen. Yeah. yeah, in Charmed, the new Charmed, one of the sisters is a lesbian and they just showed her like waking up in bed with her partner. They didn't, there was no conversation around it. You just immediately saw that that was a part of who she was and they didn't explain it. And actually when I interviewed the woman about it, she was like, yes, that's what drew me to the character is that when I read I was like, oh, this is just her, and we don't need to make a big deal out of it. Totally. I love that. It's yeah. really crazy to see the like progression of all of this. I mean, like, growing up, I, I watched Will and Grace, and that was the only show that I ever saw on television with yeah. gay characters. Yeah. And now it really is so much more like prevalent. I mean, in every Ryan Murphy show, I'm like, oh, maybe they're bi. Yeah. You know, and like, there's always that chance that it'll happen because it's him. But uh, <laughs> that was a joke. Okay, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's nice to see. Isn't that crazy though? I don't remember any gay characters on television other than Will and Grace growing up. I really yeah. can't think of, and especially in a lot of the shows I would watch, a lot of the black shows I'd watch, there were absolutely no gay characters. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, we we're and. TV networks are very reactionary, so when Ellen came out and like there was all the negative criticism, the network was like, no, we can't do gay people. So then when NBC took a bet on Will and Grace, which it was not about people coming out, it was just about two, two of the main characters were gay, gay men, and it also just talks about how they're actually women, LGBTQ women, which is so important. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so now it's like because, oh, look at the success of Ryan Murphy and all these having diversity, let's have more diversity mm -hmm. to a degree. Yeah. Right. Then they're like, well, we have our, we have our gay show. <laughs> we, don't need, we, don't need, we don't need another one, but you know. But don't you love the CW, I think, had the most gay characters, yes. and that's very yeah. reflective of where we're at because they're catering to a younger audience, and you what can know. What shows on the CW? There's like Riverdale, all like all those young, yeah, yeah. Riverdale yeah. young just shows. Riverdale have new uh, gay characters in it, and again, they didn't like make a big deal about it, even though they, she did go to conversion therapy for a second there, which was kind of scary. Uh, it was a nightmare scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the CW has a show called The 100, yeah. and it's yeah. amazing because literally it's so progressive, and they never call it out, and I love it so much. The main, uh, the lead character. She like you start off and she's like in love with this guy and the next thing you know she's in love with a woman and they never ever talk about it mm -hmm. and I just remember being like thank you right. thank you yeah that in free form I think yeah. you can no longer create program without these characters 
or the audience won't watch. And I think that's important. Like we're the ones dictating programming. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So there's obviously a need. I think the younger generation is obviously more inclusive. And you see these younger networks catering to that. And I think it's setting the tone for the bigger network. That's something yeah. that makes me so hopeful. Like I saw all of these posts of like kids who were turning 18 and why they were so excited to vote this year. Mm -hmm. And it like, oh, it makes me like remember that like we keep getting new, like better people. I know. Yeah. And I'm so excited to have them be a part of like everything. So much has changed. It's like since we were just kids. Like I remember when I watched Will and Grace and my friends would make fun Such of me and call like. This episode. I know, I'm 24. <laughs> I'm 24 years old. But I'm saying like when I was in high school or middle school, like, oh, that's the gay show. Like, what the fuck are you watching that yeah. show for? And I was like, it's really funny. Like, whatever. Like, and was now, that your voice back then? Yeah, the car was really funny. It doesn't matter. Like, these new young people are like, oh, I just watch it because it's great. And, like, you look at Pose, and Pose is like, I, you know, I loved, yes. I, I knew the era, I knew the voguing scene, but I didn't know, like, the, those stories. And they're so powerful. I am not a trans woman. But watching the, the, those stories and how the difficulty, I was, anyone's able to empathize with them and, and look and just understand their struggle and feel for them. And I feel like that's what's so important that we look at these people as humans yeah. and not as others. And, and Ryan Murphy and, and um, other creators are do doing this through their, through their work. And we're able to look at our content and see ourselves, which for so many different groups, that was not a reality for so long. Even Netflix has this campaign called Strong Black Lead, and mm -hmm. they're just, calling attention to like, yes, we are working on this. Look at all this programming we're creating. We're thinking about it. And I think it's just nice that they're calling attention. Like, we're trying. Yeah. 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 I know. It's funny because we're like, oh, we sound old. Yeah. But it just goes to show that, like, we we are not old. Right. And our in our lifetime, things have changed so uh -huh. much. Yeah. And so when I watch TV, like, I'm so nerdy about it. I get genuinely so excited by seeing all this representation. Like, it feels so good because I remember crying when I was little because I would watch shows and be like, I can't be on TV because I'm not right. Mm -hmm. right. Like, I didn't fit the mold. And that's stupid because I'm still pretty basic, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so, like, that says a lot. Yeah. So it's really exciting. And I feel really grateful. And it's cool to watch this happen and be able to appreciate it at a bigger level. Yeah, I mean, and also, yeah. I, like, I think, you know, Will and Grace was on before same-sex marriage was legalized, you know. Now you, trans rights are drastically um, mm -hmm. at risk. Um, and, you know, entertainment's going to continue. You know, we're still, still going to be making this work that hopefully more people will keep watching and, you know, hopefully our government will catch up. Yeah. Right? I yeah. think there were 20 or, or so more trans characters on TV than last yeah. year. So, again... I think what we're going through politically with the trans community is so important to put that in our art as well, right. to continue to tell these stories because they're not invisible and they shouldn't be. And so it's like we need to keep calling so that policies can change. And they're yeah. still fighting. We're still fighting yeah. for rights. Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be exciting when trans actors can play characters that aren't even trans. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited for that. I know they've been speaking a lot about the possibility of that becoming a thing. And when it happens, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. That'll be really cool. Yeah. A lot to look forward to. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> well, across the country, campus concierge services are helping young dudes and dudettes feel like kings and queens. Schools like New Mexico State and High Point University in North Carolina have launched hotel-like concierge programs in an effort to boost students' study time. Services include, but are not limited to, laundry drop-offs, vacation planning, and even restaurant recommendations. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I mean, you're paying so much for a school like already that this kind of like makes sense to me it's hor <laughs> it's horrible but when you're paying like fifty thousand dollars a year yeah make a reservation <laughs> <laughs> no i get that that's a such a fair point and it's like way more than that it's right? like if you're paying like, 75 grand that's how school. much kids are paying now can't they make a reservation for them I think we're creating broken people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't disagree, but yeah. school's so expensive that maybe it should include that. Yeah, but you're going for your education, not for somebody to do your laundry. Well, okay. So funny that one of the, the schools says, oh, they're doing this to help students with their studies. Sure, Jan. Right. Sure. <laughs> like, sure, you're helping with, with their studies. Meanwhile, they're making reservations, what bars to go to. Planning their spring break. Planning their yeah. spring break. Can you book this, this hotel in Mexico? Like, come on. I meet so many people who are just broken and yeah. like don't know how to do basic stuff. And it's, I think it's just how you're brought up. I was doing my laundry at eight. I had chores. I did yard work. I think that enabled me to move to New York on my own yeah. and survive, right? So if you hold somebody's hand all the way through college, well, then it's just delaying their maturity. And it's just like they're going to get to 24, and then they're going to move out and be like, oh, I don't know how to make a reservation. It's totally dysfunctional. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how expensive college is yeah. and how absurd that is. price is. But I'm like, OK, well, then I mean, these colleges need to be equipped with, like, what are you giving us if, like, for that amount of money? 
I, well, that, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, but education. Yeah, but educa yeah, but educations yeah. are all over the world not nearly as expensive as they are right. in this country. That is true. In this country, people pay fifty thousand dollars a year for an education. You could go to Spain and go to college for four thousand dollars a year. Yeah. So right. what is that extra money? If, uh, an education, yeah. But when I go to class, when I went to class at NYU, I would sit and count up in my head how much each class cost. Right. But you're also choosing a university that costs that much, right? Yeah. Like in the US, it very much is you are judged by the school you go to, so people are pressured yeah. to choose better schools. I went to a school that was much cheaper. I went to the University of Nebraska. Right. I think out-of-state tuition was 24,000, in-state was 12,000. Right. So it's highly manageable. You can make choices based on your right. income and your financial situation. Oh. So that's why I'm saying like, I think if you choose to go to a school that costs more, then you shouldn't expect for them to like, right. You're going for the, quality, for the experience, the quality of education. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. The American educational system we all know is broken, and I think college should be free, public universities should be yeah. free to people. That is vote. That's <laughs> a big issue on the table right now. But, it's, but it, what is, what's funny is, and I kind of with Brittany here a little bit, is that they're calling it either like you, your mother away from home. Yeah, I think part sick. of going to school is, and especially what I was so thankful going to NYU because I needed it, was learning how to live on my own and living in the city that ended up, I think, really making me who I am. That if I had someone holding my hand the whole way and being in that small school I went when I was, in, I was part of a small community in high school, I don't think I would have developed the rate I, I did. So I think this, yes, if you're paying a lot of money, it's so much fun. I would love to, hey, can I make a reservation? No, it totally like, but, leads to messed up people. But yeah, but I just don't think when they no, get, get jobs, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? You know, what are they, yeah. Yeah. And what are the mother away from home? What do they wipe their asses to? I mean, I come do. on. No, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's yeah. totally it's ridiculous. It's really <laughs> annoying. I went to a college that wasn't, uh, I went to a college that I could afford and I still ended up in debt and it wasn't that great of a college. And I, I like read, read this and I cringe because I remember going right. to my cafeteria and finding, um, finding like bugs in my broccoli. I found caterpillars. Oh. And when I took them up to the cafeteria woman, she was like, it's steamed. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but there's caterpillars. And she was like, they are steamed. And I was like, but I don't think they're part of the broccoli. <laughs> and then we like would find uh, roaches in our salads and stuff. And still, I felt like I was really lucky because I was going to college. And like my yeah. parents didn't, you know, my parents didn't even graduate high school. So I was like, this is still an accomplishment. Yeah. So it's hard when you're in school with people who are like, I don't even touch my dirty clothes. Right. They're like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. No, true. Yeah. Oh man, want some of this caterpillar salad? <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is definitely a broken system. Like you guys are saying things that are, you know, against each right. other. It's kind of yeah. like the, we're all fighting for the same thing. Is that this is too expensive? <laughs> we need a better system. And yeah. I don't think it's like treating it like a hotel is the answer. No, I totally agree. Yeah. I also think that like wherever you go, your education is really what you make of it. Hundred percent. You could go to NYU or you could go to a community college somewhere and sleep in both sleep right. in both classes, or you can go and like totally kick ass. How, how many dumbasses do I know who graduated NYU with me? I mean, yeah. such idiots. I like, mean, what the fuck? Literally, and I like, sat in a class at NYU where it was an acting one-on-one -on -one class that was I was required to take to graduate the film school, and they had us lay on the floor and pretend that the sun was tanning us, and I did it for 45 minutes, and I left, and it was a waste of my fucking time. Right. <laughs> oh, I was in. A, I was in. A, I was in a producing for TV class, and some of the idiots with the idea of like. What? You're in Tish? Like, I was just like, right. I was, whatever. But yeah, I mean, the thing is that, you know, I think it's, I think more people should have the opportunity to go to school. Like, I went to NYU and I got to go to abroad and, and we did they're, they're, they're this villa in Florence. It's ridiculous. And it's yeah. so incredible that I got to go abroad and take classes there. Like, I wish more people need to have that opportunity to, you know, we need to fix it. Lucas system. is like, people need to be bougie. Like, <laughs> yeah, I had a bougie. Everyone I was bougie. nodding, but I was like, no, I don't think more people need that. I, like, I, I went to NYU. I stayed at a villa in education. Florence. People need to have what I have. Okay. <laughs> I've already clarified I believe in free education. Everyone should have access yeah. to it. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm, it's on our card, and we should recognize it that. <laughs> totally. I think totally. we should have a broad experiences, and I, I everything agree. should be even now. I agree. I'm <laughs> well. I'm a Democrat. Shut up. <laughs> Any, anything bad he does, he's like, I voted for Hillary, leave me alone. <laughs> what, Happy what, birthday, Hillary. Whether you're a napper, a shot I lover, or an all nighter kind of person, sleep schedules are always a priority, even for celebrities. Page Six reported on many celeb sleep schedules. Tea enthusiast Mariah Carey once confessed that she needs 15 hours of sleep before a performance, while Oprah says she functions very well on five and a half hours of sleep. And I actually think there's a clinical term for how much sleep Mariah Carey's getting, which is depression. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is the first thing I thought. 15 hours of sleep? 15 hours of sleep to perform, which entails standing in one place as dancers rotate around. That's her. the best part, because we've seen videos of her dancing where just her like this. 
<laughs> She's sick. 15 hours to just like sing yeah. a song. Give me a she, look. Give me a look. Yeah. Give me a look. <laughs> I'm tired. Inspiration. You guys give it to Mariah Carey. God, you love that. 15. She should be humiliated that she said that. Aww. Oh. How much sleep do you need? 15 hours? <laughs> she needs a nice hot cup of tea in 15 hours. When did someone have time to interview her if she wasn't awake? <laughs> oh, no. There's a brief window. <laughs> brief. Um, also, Oprah only gets five and a half, but she said that she wakes up between 716 and 723 every day without an alarm clock because that stresses her out. Okay, yeah. She's magic. She just wakes yeah. up in this like seven minute window every day and she's yeah. like Bing. I 100% believe her. I like, do too. I believe it's that specific I between that time period. And then Anna Wintour goes to bed every night at 10, 15 p.m. which I've heard That's what I'm on it's Anna better to be schedule. consistent about when you go to sleep versus getting like long hours one day, short hours. Like if you go to bed at 10, 15 every night or whatever and wake up at, <laughs> Very Anna Wintour. I'm, I like that Anna Wintour schedule. Mm, I love that Anna schedule. Yeah. Well, Mark Wahlberg goes to bed at 7.30 p.m. to wake up at 2.30 a.m. to get two workouts in. He just sounds like a ball of fun. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. He wakes up at 2.15 a.m. to wake up. Someone hits him in the head with a hammer. <laughs> and then he wakes up again later today. That's, a that's what I'm imagining is the Wahlberg schedule. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think he, that's why he has so much anger. He just wakes up too early. That's, He's kind of an angry and he doesn't, dude. Just, all he does is work out and yeah. sleep? That, that, that was your life? Why can't he just do that workout during the day? Because he's... Because he's running businesses and making movies and stuff, I guess. He's like, I gotta work on Ted Six. Yeah. <laughs> Another Transformers movie. They don't make themselves. He has a burger place too. Wahlburgers. Right? Wahlburgers. Yeah, but yeah. he runs with his family. That's reality. Uh, so wait, what are your guys' sleep situations, Shannon? Ooh, I need a lot of sleep. I'm with Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> and I do suffer from depression. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Well, I do, do comedy at night, mm. so usually I get home kind of late. Um, during the week, I end up going to sleep at like 12 ish, 12 mm 30. -hmm. And then I don't know, I wish I could sleep earlier, go to sleep yeah. earlier. Yeah. I can't. What about you? I go to bed at 11. Usually, the my ritual is like take off my makeup. No, um, <laughs> I, I watch like a TV show. I like to watch something, yeah. whether it's like if I have enough time, it's like I'll do like Ozark or half an hour, it's like Seinfeld, something quick and just easy, easy and then I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I dream about the TV show. I'm a night owl, so like I have to force myself to go to sleep at midnight. Sometimes it's like one, oh. but I take a shower at night and I stretch every night. And I've done that since I was like eight. Wow, that's uh, so good and stretching. Then, yeah, I stretch every night, and I'm like I've got like an old person's body, so I got to do <laughs> it just to maintain. Uh, and then I have to wake up at 7:30 to be here. But like right. on the weekends, I'll sleep until one. Like I can easily sleep wow. for 12 hours I can't. if I don't send a. I, I have a dog. Sleep. Yeah, you gotta like. What, why can't you sleep? I don't know. I can't sleep. Oh, it's my drinking, probably. But <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, I can't. Like, I, can't. I wake up with I just, heart palpitations and smell like tequila. I don't, I don't know, know what it is. I don't know what it is. My mouth's really dry and I have a headache. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, it's because I was out to four in the morning at four. Um, yeah, no. I think it's, I have a hard time sleeping late now. But also, like, you wake up early because we get like I wake up at like seven. So yeah, try to I try to get some eight hours in. I like an eight hours. Eight hours is perfect. It's healthy. That's Ten what you is want. preferred. Ooh, yeah, 10. 10 is oh. my sweet spot. Oh, yeah, yum, yum, yum. I love sleeping so much. If yeah. I could be sleeping all the time, because I, I live a whole other life in my dreams. Yes. Right. So it's just like, I don't really need to be here to be living, Yeah, you know? this is just your waking life. <laughs> yeah, this is where I make money so I can uh, continue to have a place where I could sleep safely yeah. and go <laughs> live my real life. <laughs> Wow. I relate to that more than you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I am like living another life. It's very weird. I believe that. <laughs> there are things happening. <laughs> it's true. Uh, okay, well, I can't wait to go to sleep. And now <laughs> it's time for our guest. New York-based based restaurant chain Black Tap has not only taken the world, but also Instagram by storm. Their one-of-a-kind milkshakes have started a serious craze that continues to dominate social media. Today, Black Tap General Manager Peter Corporal is here to dish on the secret ingredients behind the chain's success. Everyone, please give a warm build brunch welcome to Peter Corporal. Hi, nice to meet you, Lucas. Wow. Thank you. Oh my God! Wow, this looks Thank amazing. You. Wow. I've never been more excited for an interview. Wow, wow, wow. wow. It's, uh, wow. it's going to be a good time. Oh, we're so my. excited to have you. So let's get Look started. At that cake. Let's get started oh, yeah. on making milkshakes, and yes. we'll talk while we make. Is that okay? Okay, cool. Of, of course. Great. All right. Uh, well, I have the cake shake in front of me, so we'll start with the cake shake. Yes. yes. All right. So in this cup, I have a cake batter, sprinkle like funfetti milkshake. I. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna pour this in here. Mm -hmm. oh All right. Oh God. 
Mm-hmm. Looks great. Looks All right. Yes, yes. Good start. Wow. Whipped cream. Oh. All right. Now, this is the simple one. This yeah. one's going to real, uh, real cool. So what's Simple in, the, it's in the actual shake, though? So we start all of our shakes with a vanilla base. It's mm -hmm. the classic. It's the best way to, you know, have the flavors added in. Um, we add different syrups, different toppings, things like what? that inside Wait. of the milkshake. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is that a whole Indeed. piece it of cake? It is an entire piece of cake. Cool. You are correct. How dare you? I know. <laughs> I'm just the worst. <laughs> so we're going to put a little wow. more whipped cream on Is this legal? I don't think in, this is legal. You know? How do you even get that? That is so states. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It's Look cool, right? That's so, beautiful. So do you get diabetes immediately? <laughs> or does it take a few hours? You know, it's, it's all about the fun. You get through oh it, and it's, it's going to be fun. That so yes, so good. cake shake as our first one. And then the cotton candy is a little bit Do you guys want to take that one? Do yeah. you want to sure. take this one here? Uh, yeah. Let's take it. Let's get that cake, it. please. Of course. So, it's going to get messy. Just so, uh, tell us like, don't as, as you're doing this, what? if it's possible. Don't eat the cake. He's our thick member. Yeah. <laughs> how, how Black Tap came to be? So Black Tap started as a 15-seat restaurant in Soho. Mm. Um, as a place that you would want to go and hang out and have a burger and beer with your friends. Mm -hmm. And we had classic shakes as well. And uh, really we really nice. took off. We started winning some burger awards. And people really, exactly, get into it. I'm Please jealous. enjoy yourselves. <laughs> um, people really started to like our food. And then we started playing around with these milkshakes. Oh, man, that's um, sweet. One of the founder's wives asked for a cotton candy milkshake, which we're building right now. Ooh. Um, and he started playing around and forming you know, different ideas. And we all started to put things forward, put new ideas in, and new flavors, and new textures. And we've come up with this really cool program of crazy shakes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they're so crazy to see on Instagram, like all of like the over-the-top cake on top of it. I've oh, seen yeah. like the, the orange one for Halloween now. We have a Halloween shake coming up. It'll be available this weekend and on Halloween. <laughs> So how has your um, how have things changed since your Instagram's blown up? Because it is so beautiful. Do you feel like you have more people coming in? Are there lines out the door? There are. We do have lines. We are a popular restaurant, but we're still really true to that like core yeah. that we started as. We still want to be that elevated diner luncheonette kind of feeling yeah. where you can go and hang out and relax. It's good vibes. It's good music. It's a it's a really fun. Place to be. Good vibes, good music. And that's your way. job. Yeah. Do you ever <laughs> like pinch yourself? You're like, this is why I get to it's do everything. It's fun. Day. It's really cool. It's one of those things where, you know, it's fun to be part of this like restaurant right. phenomenon, to be part of this like really cool new trend. So what I'm doing now is taking cotton candy. You just keep adding. I know. Right? It's huh. just gonna keep. So happening. what <laughs> makes the perfect like black tap milkshake? Besides, like it's crazy in the flavors. Is there anything in particular that like? So everything that we're doing, every flavor of shake that comes out, every you know thing that we're putting on our menu goes through a lot of testing and a lot of tasting, and we really make sure that it's a, a product that we're proud of, something that is of high quality and really tastes fantastic and looks cool and kind of bridges both of those worlds, that you get to enjoy a really great piece of, of art-like food. Yeah. And, you know, brag to your friends that and, you got to do it. And, like, these are consistently, like, they're all around, like, $15, $15 right? So, like, which is, I think, a deal when you're getting a piece of art. You are. I mean... So all of these are built to order. It's not like they're, they're oh, okay. being pulled out of like a freezer and mm -hmm. you know, we're making all of this in the moment for you. Right. Um, Can I take this? There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, please do. Please enjoy. Wow. Oh my God. There you go. Um, that and is what are the some cotton are... candy milkshake. It's so it. beautiful. <laughs> it's cool, right? It really wow. is. And what are some of your oh, other yeah. um, favorite things on the menu that aren't the milkshake? Right. So we also have award-winning burgers. We That's We Burger amazing. Bash three years in a row at New York Food and Wine Festival and a couple other like, you know, burger competitions. Um, we have a, the all-American burger, classic American cheese, lettuce, tomato, pickle. There's a special sauce on the bun. Um, love a good special love sauce. Love a good special right? sauce. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And ours is great. A little bit of smoky, like, chipotle mm -hmm. flavor in there. Really. Ah. This is, sounds like heaven to me. It's Are you great. God? Uh, uh, hello. Nice yeah. to meet you. Um, Let's do this. We, uh, we have the Greg Norman milkshake, <laughs> which is really popular. Uh, it's a Wagyu beef patty with blue cheese and arugula <laughs> and uh, buttermilk dill on the side. It's like a loose house-made ranch almost. Right. It's oh, great. Man. We have really great food. We have award-winning wings. So people come for the milkshakes but stay for the burgers. They stay for the burgers. Yeah. They really do. What is your favorite like uh, milkshake burger combo? Okay, so I love classic, and we do have classic shakes as well. Oh, you, you know, can just get like a chocolate you shake. You can just get a chocolate shake. Classic, you know, beautiful, same cup, just no crazy decorations. Okay, and good to know. So they are available as well. Um, my go-to is usually uh, Mexico City burger. Okay. House pickled jalapenos and carrots and onions. There's an onion ring on top of pepper jack cheese. And a sweet and salty shake as well, which was a oh. peanut butter shake with all these crazy, cool, beautiful toppings. I think that's the shake I had when I was there. I'm a peanut Probably. butter person. 
All right. Wow. Yeah, it's a it's a good one. Yeah, it's that a, sounds good. One of the originals. So there are, are there any plans to expanding outside of New York? So we already have a few outside of New York. You do? Okay. We just opened in Singapore in oh, wow. uh, Green wow. Bay Sands Hotel. Wow. That's really cool. It's a beautiful spot. I got to go out there for a couple weeks and see and you know make sure it's a black tap. And it was yeah. it's really great. Um, we're opening a couple new ones in Dubai and Kuwait. Um, and the next big one in America, though, is in downtown Disney in, uh, in L.A. Oh, that's going to count. So, that's yeah, gonna be, yeah. That's going to be a yeah, It'll be great. Spot. So that'll be sometime this winter. Um, but, yeah, we are, we're really excited about that. Well, that's so awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Thank Peter. you for having yes. me. Thank you for having uh, me. I'm so proud of you. This is so you. good. Thank You're a hero. I, I yeah. do what I can, guys. I do what I can. <laughs> Make sure to drop by Black Tap to treat yourself to your very own milkshake, burger, beer, or cocktail. That's all from us. We'll see you on Monday, same time, same table. Woo!